good morning everyone it's been a while we did our normal training so i want to welcome everyone for joining us today i'm just going to mute I'm just going to mute okay so good morning everyone I want to believe you can hear me and you can see me <coughs> so this training is just going to be for 30 minutes and I want to encourage each and every one of us to tell our friends, tell our success lines, tell our team members to join the training. Um, it's just like a discussion like we all do, like we do every week. I know we used to have it every Tuesday. But like some of you know, um, there has been digital marketing class. And that has really taken my time. For like three weeks now, there has been trainings back to back. So, but I decided we have to do this today, being Friday. And um, today's topic is just something that we are all used to. But again, it's good to constantly remind ourselves. So once again, my name is Adeinka Igmenoba. I'm a real estate advisor and I'm a media consultant. So what we are talking about today is staying relevant in business. Five ways to stay relevant and when we say relevance or when we say five ways to stay relevant in business what that means is that businesses really do evolve you know circumstances do change from one position to another especially in a in a world where we have a lot of competitions you know in several businesses i want to believe there are no businesses that we are doing that we are the only one doing that business. So if you have several people doing your business, you have to look for ways to stay relevant. You have to look for ways to keep staying in business. And what I tell people most times is, if you are not, if you are not creative enough, you realize that event is going to move you from the business that you have been used to, the business that you are so confident about, the business that you are to, so at home with, you will just realize that you are gradually gravitating out of that business. So what we say is, number one, you know, to actually be a business owner is not easy, especially in this part of the world where you just have to do things on your own where nobody is really supporting and when i say nobody is supporting what i mean is the government is not supporting and again we can actually also com comfortably say friends are not supporting families are not supporting but let's just take a scenario where you want to start a business the first thing you need to do is you need to start a business plan you need to look at you know the nitty-gritty of the business the pros and cons how that business is going to be and we live in a world where you just have to do all the thinking on your own we live in a world where it has to be what you can come up with so take for instance you want to start a business and you know you've come up with a plan and you realize you need like five million for that business we live in a world where you can't just write to the bank and say oh you want to do a business and they just look at your business plan and they say okay they are ready to support you mm -hmm. I know that there are some banks that do that, but if you look at the bureaucracy, if you look at, you know, the the requirements to even get these funds, to get this um, support, a lot of people are discouraged. Then they start looking at family members, friends to want to support them. So at the end of the day, when you have all the support, you are now still going to be faced with the challenges in the industry. Uh, Ridgeway Realtors, good morning, good morning, sir. Um, Inge's Realty, good morning. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining. So the topic we are talking about today is five ways to stay relevant in business. So what I was saying is, even if you have all the support from 
whatever means or whatever channel that you want support from, you now need to face the industry, the challenges of being a business owner, the challenges of being a business person. So how do you now tackle those systems, those challenges? And even after tackling them, because things really do evolve. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Engage Realty, good morning. Thank you. So because of all the challenges, as a business owner, how do you want to stay relevant? And because majority of the people watching me are realtors, I also know that you know some of us have our businesses. Sorry, let me move my chair, especially for the people on Facebook. Okay. So now I know a lot of us are realtors, but again, I also understand that some of us do other businesses. But whatever we are talking about today, it cuts across. Good morning, the property lady. Good morning, sis. Cool, Remy. Good morning. So what we'll be talking about today cut across several other businesses and is something that we should take seriously so i've listed out five ways to stay relevant in business it doesn't matter if you are a realtor it doesn't matter if you are if you are into um, products you are selling or services whatever business you do know that you are not the only one doing that business and know that you have a lot of competitors Know that your clients or your customers are fickle, you know. They, they, they are not patronizing you because you are you. They are not patronizing you because they like you. They are not patronizing you because they think your, your, your product or your services is superb. In most cases, customers can say, this is why I am patronizing this person. And again, what I say all the time is, business or selling or buying is very very emo emotional people buy with sentiment then they later justify their purchase so i've listed out five things five ways to stay relevant in business and number one on my list is study your sales trend study your sales trend so you've been in business you've been selling you've been making sales the first person you need to do as a business owner or as a sales executive or as a social media manager or whatever, the first thing you need to do is study your sales strength. Look at where your sales are coming from. Look at the kind of people buying your products. Look at your sales channel, your sales funnel. And what do I mean? So let's assume you are in the business. Okay, so let's assume... You are in a business and you are selling, you are selling, you are selling. Fine, there are several sales channels, there are several sales funnels. And what that means is that as a salesperson, you do a lot of marketing. You expect a lot of people to come buy something from you, from several sources. So the first thing you need to do as a business person or as a business owner or as a salesperson is study your sales trend. Study where those sales are coming from. The channel. So let's assume you are selling offline and online. When I say offline, you know what that means. Probably you are doing hand billing. And somebody wants to be in this video. Okay, let me just see. If you want to be in the video, you want to. Okay, so if you are doing online and offline, and even the on online now is now, you know. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. You want to have um, you have a contribution? Uh, no, I'll make the contribution later. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that's someone from um, Instagram. So basically, even when it is online, what do you now need to do? There are several channels, there are several sources that sales do come from. So one of the ways to stay relevant in business is study the sales channel. So let's assume you have like four trends. You have like four funnels or four channels that your sales are coming from. One sure way to stay relevant in your business is study the channel or study the trend that is bringing the sales. Why do you have to study the trend? Why do you have to study the channel that is bringing the, this um, sales? One thing as business owners, or one thing as sales executives, what thing we do is when we invest in marketing or when we invest in 
you know, the channels that brings this sale. We want to know if our investment is worth the while. So let's assume I'm, I'm spending like 20,000 era now, probably on adverts or on marketing, on different channels. And at the end of the day, at the end of the month, or at the end of you know, a quarter, I wanted to study my sales strength. And I realized that with all the four channels, just one channel. Only the electrical. Sorry, I might have to end it. So you re if I realized that of all the four channels, just one channel brought all the sales. So that will inform my mind on how to target my audience. That will inform my mind on where to concentrate going forward so that I don't just, you know, gaze my attention away from something that is productive or that is prof profitable to something that is not really bringing any, that is not yielding anything. Mm. The first thing you need to do is to track your sales trend. Thanks so much, everyone joining. And then um, what we are talking about today is five ways to stay relevant in business. So the first one I said is study your sales trend. And it's supposed to be a 30 minutes training, so I won't you know, take anybody's time. But um, after now, the video will be on my IGTV on Instagram, and it will still be on my Facebook page. I think I've gone over. So now the second one, the second way to stay relevant in business is track your competitors. Track your competitors. Now, you know, as individuals, just on our own personal life now, you know, even for, personally, I'm, I'm a fan of when I say, I don't have to look at what you are doing. You know, I don't copy. I don't envy people. Fine. I don't envy people. But as a business owner, there are things that my competitors are doing that I want to know how they are doing it. And one sure way is one to track your competitors. You have to keep edging them. You see, it's a trick that a lot of us don't know. And if you look at some known names, if you look at Coca Cola, if you look at Pepsi, there is no innovation or there is no new thing that. Coca-Cola brings to the world that Pepsi doesn't bring. What they just do is they do a small modification and before you know it, they are already competing. That is what uh. business is all about. Now, if I want to bring you back memory lane, when MTN started, MTN, you know, they were selling their, their, their SIM card for like 30, 40, 50,000 Naira and they were charging like 15 Naira per minute. So even, you, even if you, you make a call and the call ends, you're still going to pay like 15 Naira per minute. Then I think Airtel, then they were Econet. They joined and they were following the same trend. But when Glow came, when Globacom came, the first thing is they reduced the purchase price of their SIM card and they were not operating per minute. They were operating per second. So what they did naturally then is most of all the users, most of all MTN subscribers or Econet subscribers, they just naturally switched to Globacom because it was easier, it was less expensive, and you know you could reason with someone, you could dialogue. That's what it means. So when you make a call and probably the, the network or the cell have to pay for a whole minute. But now there is another um company, there's another brand that is saying even if it's one second you use or it's two seconds you use, we are going to charge you based on what you use. And the competition was so steep that Econet had to change, MTN had to change. If you remember, that was the basis of why we are now having MTN, Econet, Nine Mobile, Zen, mm. now Airtel, and, and so on. And now the rates are very competitive. So you can't be an island on your own. You can't just say this is the way you want to do business and you stick to it. As a business owner, as a business person, as a sales executive, one sure way to keep being in business, to stay relevant in business is track your competitors. Look at what they are doing well, emulate it and build on it. Now look at what they are not doing well and don't make that mistakes. So if you have a competitor doing something that is not good, 
you don't have to do wait till it happens to you. You know, my mom would tell me something when we were growing up, and she would tell me, Adenka, it's only a fool that learns from personal mistakes, that a wise person will learn from other people's mistakes and, you know, imbibe that into his or her own businesses. So one sure way is track your competitors, be, be at par with them, be digi with them, so that when they do something that is making wave in the industry, look at what they are doing, you know, assimilate it, build up on it, and unleash yours. That is the number second way of, the second um, list, the, the second point, we are talking about five ways to stay relevant in business. So the first one we talked about, study your sales trend or study your sales channel. The second one is track your competitors. Then the third one, which, you know, a lot of us really don't do these days is read business magazines and trade journals. Somebody said, um, somebody wrote a quote sometimes back and the person said, if, if you want, if you don't want Nigerians to see anything or to know about how to make money or something, write it in a book. That is because we hardly read. We hardly read. Fine. For me, I am also of a visual person. You know, I, I like to uh, um, videos or let me say visuals now, pictures, videos, podcasts. You know, it speaks more to me than when I read. But everything now has been simplified. So when we say we read business magazines and trade journals, it could be videos. And also, if you are good with reading, read all these things. There are sales tricks. There are things that people, people, there are things. Read business magazines and sales journals. Yeah, thank you, the property lady. Now, there are things that people have faced in their own businesses. And when they now take it upon themselves to write it down or to share their experiences with upcoming business owners, it will be so bad if, as a business owner, you are not reading those journals. Because at the end of the day, you are now going to make the mistakes they have made. So one sure way as a business owner is you have to read business magazines. Mm -hmm. You have to read... Why? Sorry. How people can see me on Facebook. I don't know why the video paused, but I think I'm back now. You have to read trade journals. You have to look at what is going on in the industry. People that have succeeded in the industry, people that have their own success stories, people that have their own failure stories, they want to share these stories with us so that we as young business owners, we as aspiring business owners, will not fall into those mistakes. But if we are just on our own, businesses have challenges. You know, we've said that even when we started this training. There are no businesses that doesn't have our own challenges. So the, the bottom line is, how do we want to overcome these challenges? And there are ways where we won't even face these challenges if we are on top of our game. So if I'm a business owner and something happened to me in my own company, in my own business, and mm. I call my friend, the property leader, and I say, Juliet, Juliet, this is somebody want to be in this video, Diamond Realtors. And I just call Juliet and say, Juliet, this is what happened in my own organization. This, 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 this happened to me. The only, the, the only sensible thing for Juliet now is to make sure that what happened to me that I have explained to her should not happen to her in her own business. So as a business owner, there are ways we can be in the business. One, we keep being relevant. And two, we don't face any challenge at all. So the third one I said is read business magazines and trade journals so that you can have a full idea about how the business goes. I know that majority of us just go into businesses that we don't know. Fine. You know, as much as I'm not a fan of going into a business that you really, you are not really in-depth in, there are ways that you can do a business you don't know, but yet you are still on top of your game. So now the fourth one is follow industry leaders on social media. You see, one thing that we can remove from our discussion or from who we are is 
there are people that are leaders in the industry, in any industry at all. There are pace setters. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Thanks for joining. All right. Good morning, ma. Good morning. You have a contribution? No, not at all, ma. Okay. I just no. I just um. I love your um. I love this program. Thank so you. So I'm just joining for the first time. Okay. Thank you. So what we are talking about is five ways to stay relevant in business, and then um, we said okay. the first way is study your sales trend, like study your sales right. channel. Then the second one is okay. track your competitors. You need to know what your competitors are doing. If they are doing what right. is wrong, you have to correct that. If they are doing what is right, you have to emulate that and build on it. That's the second one. Then the third one is read business magazines and trade journals so that you can learn from those that have succeeded in that kind of industry. That's the third one. And now the fourth one, we are saying that you should follow leaders and industry leaders on social media. So that's what I will be talking on now. Follow industry leaders on social media. Well, thanks so much for joining. Oh, all right, ma. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. It's my right. pleasure. Thank you. Yes. All right, ma. So now the fourth one is follow industry leaders on social media. There are people in the industry, whatever business that you find yourself, that they have made a mark. You know, take for instance, I just want to go into probably um, software development. I want to be a software programmer or I want to be a, a software engineer or something. There are people I should look up to. I should look up to people like Bill Gates and the likes. I should look up to people like Max Zuckerberg and the like. So as a business owner, either existing business owner or aspiring business owner, follow industry leaders. Nobody is an island on his own. Nobody is an island of knowledge. Nobody knows it all. And especially because of our own industry and because of our own country. Over the years, I did a survey and I realized that 70% of people in the labor market, 70% of business owners now, especially small business owners, or let me even categorize it and say graduates, 70% of graduates are not in their field. And what I mean is, for example, if you go to school now and you study geology, you are not in any company doing mining or whatever. If you go to the university and you study banking and finance, you are not in a bank working. You are not in anywhere where they have given you that role to function as a banker or as a finance person. So let's assume you go mm. into the university and you study business administration. You are not seeing that business admin job to do anywhere. So we realize that we we gradually gravitate towards something that nature has brought to us or something that we now have passion for. And again, you also realize that 40% of the people in the university, they are not studying the course they chose. They are not studying the course they love. They are not studying the course they like. They are studying the course that the government has thrown, at the, uh, the institution has thrown at them. So they don't have a choice. I remember that when I was in the university, I, I got admission through diploma. I did diploma in data processing. Then when I did my direct entry, it was um, I chose um, computer science as my first and second choice. And you know, when I was given a course, I was given math science. I was given math and statistics. So I was like, I don't want to be a mathematician. I don't like math and statistics. What I want was computer science. So at the end, the end of the day, some of my mates were like, they don't have a choice. Their cut off mark, that's what they can give them. But I had to walk up to my HOD's office and I told him that, sir, what I wanted is computer science mm -hmm. and my, my grade, my cut off can actually give me that computer science. That was why I had to switch to computer science. So the bottom line is, majority of my mates had to just stick to the maths and statistics, mm -hmm. something they never liked, something that was not their choice. But the institution or the society just had to, you know, force that on them and they don't have the choice. So when they naturally graduate from school, you will see them not being in a place doing a job that relates to their course. They will not have to do what they naturally have passion for or what is paying their bills. You know, some of my friends will say paying their bills. Just for, for example, we are talking about real estate now. 
I didn't read real estate in school. Fine, I have building um, certifications. But then I'm into real estate because it's something I have passion for. It pays my bills. I love doing it. And, mm. But I didn't study it in school. So if you find yourself in that situation as a business owner, either you study it in school, either your passion, you still need to get mentorship from people that have succeeded in the industry. You still need to get you know, that support. Mentorship and coaching is all we need to succeed. And what does that tell us? What does mentorship and coaching do to us? It makes us see things in a very different light. It makes us see things in a very different way. When we say giants in the industry, in every way, in every aspect, there are people that we met in the industry. There are people that have been in the industry before even we were born. And there are people that have succeeded in the industry. So as a business owner and for some of us that want to stay relevant in the business, we need to follow these people, see mm. their ways of responding to questions, see the mistakes they've made in the past, see how their procedure has been, see how they have graduated from one level to another, see their mistakes, see their success stories, see their failure stories, and act accordingly. On that take for instance and it happens all the time there will be a point in your career where when you get to that career you are now a force to reckon with if there are policies to be changed if there are things to be said some people want to be in this video if there are policies to be changed if there are things to be said they consult some people first because they are giant leaders in their industry so what that means is that if there is a new policy that is coming up and some of the giants mm. in the industry just post it on their social media, if you are following those people, you have a first-hand information. You have a first-hand knowledge that, oh, this is coming and you are going to be prepared. You are going to act accordingly. Please, my small volume. You can't hear me. Somebody is saying they can't hear me on. Oh, this is my IS. This is my IS. I'm sorry. I just tried to increase the volume now. And this is the IS. Somebody say said they can't hear me on Instagram. Please, can you hear me, please? So the bottom line is follow industry leaders on social media. See their own um, uh... ideology. See their own impression. See what they feel about products. See what they feel about policies. And now, seeing what, they, seeing what they feel about each of these things doesn't mean you should naturally just take it hook, line, sinker. But you will see, okay, thank you. You will see from where they are talking from, their own point of view, and you will now sit down and think that, okay, if you imbibe this, is it going to be a plus for you or a minus for you? So what we are talking about for those just, just joining us, first, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Ade Inka Ikminoba. And we are talking about five ways to stay relevant in business. We talked about study your sales trend. We talked about track your competitors. We talked about read business magazines and trade journals. Then we talked about follow industry leaders and social media. It's supposed to be a 30 minutes training, but now we are talking about the last one. The last one is do a lot of research and be consistent. Do research and be consistent. One thing that we hardly do in this country is research. And if I want to digress a bit into now the era of this COVID-19, we can't do anything in our country. We have to wait for, oh, as Trump said, uh, uh, chloroquine is good. As Trump said, I do, I do something, something is good. Oh, Madagascar is now using our ABBA. We want to test the ABBA. Why are we not doing research on our own? You know, why are we not the one saying we have done some research and we think, um, probably lemongrass is good. Why are we not doing research and say, oh, black seed oil is good? Why are we not doing research and say, okay, chloroquine is good or tetracycline is good or whatever? So, because we live in, 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 in a part of the, of, the, of the world where we just don't do research, we just take things and we just, you know, just assimilate it like that, then we are done. But as a business owner, we need to do a lot of research and be consistent. Thank you so much, the property lady. She has listed it out. 
do a lot of research and be consistent. Any business you want to do at all, either it's an existing business or it's a business you are still looking forward to, the moment you conceive a business idea, do a research uh, about that business. Look at the pros and cons. Look at, you know, how sustainable the business is. Look at the people that the business wants to sell. Look at, research about how they feel or how they perceive it. Look at people that have done the business before. What they have to say about the business. It's very, very important. And I'm going to give you a, a small story before I do a recap of what we've done so far. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining. There was a time I was working at the bank. I was working at Echo Bank, the one at Kota, at um, Aja. And if you go to that complex, there are the different routes, route one, route two, route three. I think then it was up to route seven. I think route five. There's no road that you can't see up to like 20 baby shops, 20 children or kiddies shop where they sell clothes for children. They sell shoes and everything. So there was a time I walked into the shops, you know, I met the salespeople, the salesperson, and I had to ask that, how is sales? How, how, how uh, often do you sell? And majority of them, they were telling me that, ah, madam, there's no sale that we can be in this shop for like two weeks and people will just come negotiate and go. Maybe in a month, we'll sell like two clothes. So I now start to wonder that, okay, if there are no sales, why do we have several, several, several shops in the same complex? So I realized that when people want to go into business or when people want to rent a shop, they just go to a quarter and like, oh, maybe shop here, maybe shop there, maybe shop this, maybe shop that. That means maybe things is selling. That means kiddies' clothes are selling. But on the contrary, they are not. On the contrary, those people are just there while in a wait time using their rents. So the bottom line for a business person is do a lot of research. Do a lot of research. If you want to go into, for example, a dry cleaning um, service, do a lot of research. Do a survey, online survey. Uh, okay, when, if you want to wash your clothes, you want to dry clean your clothes, do you do personal laundry or you give it to a dry cleaner? You can even do physical hand billing. Just go to, to a place like a shop or an area where you want to do that. And thank you, Kuremi. Just go to an area where you want to do that and drop um, surveys for people questioning that, okay, this, this, and that. So take, for instance, you just go to a place where you are thinking of starting a dry cleaning shop and you give them your, your manual or your banner and everybody is telling you, oh, I don't, I don't patronize um, dry cleaners or laundry shops, laundry um, outfits. I just wash, I, I have a washing machine. You should automatically know that by the time you start a business in that kind of area, that kind of laundry business, you are not going to make any profit. So do a lot of research about any business you want to do, especially in a particular location. Either it's an online business or it's an uh, offline business, whether it's digital or tra traditional business, you must do a lot of research. By the time you do your research and you realize that, okay, this is going to be profitable, then you start the business and you are consistent in the business. Two weeks ago, I was doing the training and I said that in Nigeria of today, the break-even point for business owners is between two years to three years. That is the truth. So what I'm saying invariably is as a business owner, if you start a business, before you can start making profits, it's between two to three years. So you can start a business and in six months, you're already looking at your cost that you don't have money, you can't continue, you're not making profits. No, it's not magic. It's not rocket science. It's something that needs a lot of dedication, a lot of research, and a lot of you know understanding the details, the tactics, the nitty gritty of the business. So if you want to do a business and you have it at the back of your mind that this business, I'm going to break even between two to three years, put in your uh, all and be consistent. The research you are doing is something that is going to be continuous. You can't do it today and say you have done it today. Things are evolving. Technology is evolving. The world as a whole is evolving. Take for instance, nobody knows that, oh, meetings will now be via Skype or via Zoom or via Google Classroom or whatever. Like a year ago, nobody knew that the world is going to be where we are today. So take for instance, if there were no Zoom, take for instance, if there were no social media space or there, are no, there were no online space that were already existing before this COVID-19 just, you know, stunned everyone. So we need to constantly do research and be consistent in anything that we do. 
So I'm going to wrap up now. Um, what we were talking about or what we talked about today is five ways to stay relevant in business. And we talked about five things. The first one we said is study your sales trend, like your sales channel or your sales funnel. Uh, the second one is track your competitors. The third one is read business magazines and trade journals. The fourth one is follow industry leaders on social media. And the last one is do a lot of research and be consistent. So if you have any question, please bring it on. As usual, there's no light. So we have to sweat. So if you have any question, you want to be in the video, please, we have like five minutes to just wrap up. And I want to say a very big thank you to everyone that joined. The video will be on Instagram. It will be on my IGTV. I pray it saves. And it's also going to be on Facebook as well. I hope my audio was clear. So far, so good. I'm not seeing any comments uh, on Facebook, but I can see comments on Instagram. So I want to say a very big thank you to everyone that joined. If you have any question, any thing you want to add, or there's something that has been bothering you either on real estate or, or on business general, bring it on. Let's talk about it before we call it a day today. Any question, observation, addition? Let me see if I can call everyone that joined in on Instagram. Inge's Realty, thank you. Ridgeway Realtors, Mary, Mary Dave Associates, thank you. Poor Remy, thank you. The Property Lady, thank you so much, my sis. Um, Joe AK, thank you. Prime, Prime uh, as Asset Realtors, thank you. Diamond Realtors, Ekbenoba, Nusa, thank you. Wendy Realtors, thank you. Plani, thank you. Kingsley, thank you for joining. Fela, thank you for joining. Anne Rains, thank you for joining. Micro Bilonia Realtors, thank you. Roab Limited, thanks for joining. Do have magazine or journals you can recommend. But what I'm saying is read business magazines and trade journals. That's number four. So that means no questions, no addition, no subtraction. So if there are more trainings, if there are more online sessions, I will always um, post it in the group. I want to say thank you so much to everyone that joined. Let's keep staying consistent in our business. Let's follow the leaders in the industry on the social media. Let's aspire to be better than what we are right now. So thank you so much. I'm going to be ending it. I'll talk to you later. The video will be on my social media platforms after today. Thank you so much for joining.